Welcome again, welcome, welcome. Today's topic is the fanatical mind, part two, chapter five, basically. So it's the same chapter we are just continuing right now. And as I mentioned, this is a long chapter, so bear with me. It could be maybe six parts, I don't know. We'll see. But today, Today's topic, where we will start with too much made of a happy flight of feelings. Let's get right into it. Some are not satisfied with a meeting unless they have a powerful and happy time. They work for this and get up an excitement of feelings. Okay, so. Huh. But the influence of such meetings is not benefic beneficial. When the happy flight of feeling is gone, they sink lower than before the meeting because their happiness did not come from the right source. The most profitable meetings for spiritual advancement are those which are characterized with solemnity and deep searching of heart, each seeking to know himself and earnestly and in deep humility seeking to learn of Christ. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, page 412. And I think this is something that let me put it that way, that happen all the time where ooh, we get to that mode of feeling-based type of worship instead of, instead of, how would I put that? Instead of, <laughs> interesting, uh, conviction, yes, conviction-based type of worship. And so we get all the feelings going, and of course when the feeling is gone, when the worship is over, then we get back to where we where we were before, and so there's no conviction actually. There's no there's no conviction. It's all it's all feelings, and the excitement, the the sermon is excitement. It's talking loud. It's uh, repetitive. It's uh, I mean yes. It's out there now, even in our church, or at least even in my church, meaning the Seventh Day Adventist Church, in general. I'm not talking about the. I'm not talking about any other church. I'm talking about my my church, my people, the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Even there, we have it now, um, and it's becoming more prominent. People like to preach like this. It's all about yelling. It's all about screaming and. So, well, hey, you know what? The thing is, they know what they are doing. And if this is how God wants them to preach, then I guess. But if it's not that way, then they need to change that. Because God would like to use them as well to be profitable to people. And not just to themselves. Not make it turn into a feeling-based type of worship. All type of um, song or singing, type of sermon, type of anything. So, um, and you can also know that one thing that I think that happens is do people actually come to learn of Christ or do they come for the worship service? That is a good question I would like to ask you guys. Do people come because they want to learn of Christ or do they come because of the the experience they might feel in the worship service that's for you guys to answer moving on let's continue 
strange exercises. I would say so far, I'm kind of happy so far within my people, we don't have that kind of things. I hope I am right. I haven't seen any strange exercises in my church. That's a good thing. I hope it stays like this, at least none of that. I've seen so many of these in other churches. Yes, I'm not talking down on them, but the reality is I've seen that a lot. By such fanaticism as we have lately had among us in California, in peculiar exercises and the claim of power to cast out devils, Satan is seeking to deceive, if possible, the very elect. So, Jesus did say that Satan will try to deceive even the very elect. So, don't be surprised if Satan is trying to deceive the very elect. Ha! <laughs> there is no need for surprise at all. You should already be uh, on your guard that Satan is, wants, Satan is trying to do exactly that. So, these persons claiming to have a special message for our people would charge one, one and another with being possessed of an evil spirit. How could that be? How could it be that I have... <laughs> I'm going to come back to that one actually. Let me just finish that paragraph first. Then, after praying with them, they would declare that the, the devil cast out. The result of their work testified of its character. I was bidden to say to our people that the Lord was not in these strange exercises, but that such exhibition would deceive souls to their ruin unless they were warned and, oh, they were warned and Bible truth will be perverted. Letter 12, 1909. So basically what we have is this. We have people with a message and then, how would I put that? And then they, 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 they say that the other person is of the devil? Is that what I'm actually reading right now? Oh yes, that's exactly what it is. Oh wow. So, now hold on, let me... Yes, that is actually what's going on. We have one group calling the other group exactly the devil type. So, I wonder... I wonder what that would mean. Let me put some more lights, actually. Um... I wonder what that would mean. Interesting. Hmm. So which one of them is of the devil? And then apparently after they pray, then the devil is cast out. That makes no sense whatsoever. That's why she said that God is not working in this kind of... What is that word that we use? Cacophony, cacophony. Is that the one? I think it's the one. I think it's that. Um, that confusion. No, that, in a spiritual term, Babylon. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. So which one of them had the devil? I don't know. Because if you're saying, I have the devil, and I'm saying, you have the devil, and then we pray, and then we say that the devil is cast out, cast out, out of who? Hmm. Let's move on. Let's move on. Naturally combative. Some are naturally combative. And I'm going to put it in this way. It's not just in the, in the spiritual term, but unfortunately... Um, I guess there's a statistics out there that says 88% of men are finding women not wifeable. In a new term, men are not wife material. 88% of men. 
Why? Because now women have become very combative. It's like a... It's like a... How would I say that? Mm, I'm trying to find a better word. I mean, like, the word that describes it perfectly. Mm. Oh, yes. It, it, it's as though now it's a competition between men and women. It's a competition. And so men are like, wait a minute, no. I am not trying to marry a man. I'm trying to marry a woman. But you're acting like a man. So, no. Combative. Nowadays, this is very prominent. If it is prominent in the spiritual realm, then I can guarantee you. In a physical realm, it is. And that's why now marriage is declining. People are happy that divorce is declining. Not because of divorce is declining, but because marriage is declining. Because people are now naturally combative. It's all about competition. People as well, in the spiritual sense, are becoming combative. What it is. We are living in that kind of time. Let's see. They do not care whether they harmonize with their brethren or not. Okay. That should tell you everything already. They will not be the the first order. They will not be the first, the head deacon. They will not be the head Sabbath school director. They will not be the head media. They will not be the head anything. Yeah. They want, to be, they want to be the head of anything because they want to be the one in charge. So they're going to be competing with somebody else to get to that place. I think my brother said something to me one time about that and I was surprised. I'm not going to mention what happened, but he did tell me what happened in his church one time. Doing what we call it, um, nomination. Yeah. They would like to enter into controversy, would like to fight for their particular ideas. Oh, <laughs> I just said that. Guys, I haven't read that chapter yet. I, at least I haven't read that part. I'm reading right now with you. And I just mentioned what I mentioned, and now here it is again. <laughs> I was not just guessing on it, it happens all the time. In our churches, the Seventh-day Adventist church as well. Yes, my people. But they should lay, uh, lay this aside, for it is not developing the Christian graces. Work with all your power to answer the prayer of Christ, that his disciples may be one as he is one with the Father, not one with the Father, not a soul, of us is safe unless we learn of Christ daily, his meekness and lowliness. In your labor, do not be dicta dictatorial, do not be severe, do not be antagonistic. And trust me, when I used to be a Sabbath school director, um, that I, I, I basically watched, watch out, watch out how I speak to people because yeah, people can definitely think that. But thank God, thank God, I never had anybody complain about me ruling the Sabbath school department. Never. That's a good thing. Because I can tell you, it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure when you are the head of a department, especially in church. Because one bad move you make, yes, you gonna get slammed by Satan. Preach the love of Christ, and this will melt and subdue hearts. Seek to be of one mind and one judgment with your brethren and to speak the same things. Yes, we need more of that in the church. 
Mm. But now churches are now divided into Republicans and Democrats as well. So how can they be united? Yep, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> yeah. Trust me. Churches are now divided into political party. You're either a Republican or a Democrat. I won't even get more into that. This talking about divisions because all do not have the same ideas as present as present themselves to your mind is not the work of God but of the enemy. Talk the simple truth wherein you can agree. Talk of unity. Do not become narrow and conceited. Let your mind broaden. Manuscript 111. 1894. I'm not even. I'm not gonna comment on this one. I don't see why I should because um, everybody can see for themselves that the church is becoming like that nowadays. So all I can do is raise my hand in the air. And that's about it. Moving on. Moving on to following a self-established standard. Many. Many are trusting to their own righteousness. True. They set up a standard for themselves and do not submit to the will of Christ and allow him to clothe them with the robe of his righteousness. They form characters according to their own will and pleasure. And pleasure. Satan is well pleased with their religion. They misrepresent the perfect character, which is the righteousness of Christ. The righteousness of Christ. Themselves deceived, they deceive others. So first they get deceived, and then they go to deceive others. And funny thing is, hold on, while you hold that thought, come back to it later on. Okay, They are not accepted of God. They are liable to lead others, other souls into false path. They will at last receive the reward with the great deceiver, Satan. Manuscript 138, 1902. Okay, now let's back to what I was going to say earlier. It is easy, it is very interesting to understand that those that are deceived, mm, they don't believe they are deceived. Because if you knew you were deceived, you would, you would hate yourself so much to stay in that deception. You see? You see what Satan does is, um, he makes the truth, um, he makes the lie close to the truth. So that when you are deceived, you don't really think you are deceived because you think you are doing the right thing. That's the deception. You believe you are doing the right thing. Ooh. In reality, nobody would want to be deceived. Um, I would say, well, not nobody, because some people actually... You know what? I do believe that nobody wants to be deceived purpose, purposely, willingly. I don't think so. But people are actually willingly deceived because they don't like the truth, as the Bible says. They don't love the truth. So God says they are willingly deceived. Why are they willingly deceived in a sense? Because they did not want to study God's word. In a sense, they don't believe they are deceived, but they are willingly deceived by not studying God's word. And that's what it is. So, so, what do we do from now? Now the question is, do you have that same issues in your church? Do people try to fight for position in your church? Yes or no? Or maybe? 
Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm never, you know, I'm never in a hurry to have a position in the church, actually, for some reason. I only choose a position if nobody wants to do it, basically. Last time I was, what, a service school director? Now, because they they asked me, they didn't tell me, they, they were the one that came up to me and said, hey, would you like to be, I mean, the whole church? Or should I say the whole committee? The whole committee asked me if I wanted to be the Sabbath school director. And I still said no. But they're like, wait, no, no, no. If you do, because he can get a break and do other things that he has to do as well, then I said yes. You shouldn't ever be in a, in a hurry to be, uh, to help, to be a, have a position in the church. Your, your only thing you should do in church is live Christ-like character. That should be your goal. Not to become the the first elder, not to become the the the, the head deacon or the service school director or any of these. No, that's not the goal. The goal is to live up to Christ's character. Even in the church, yes, of course, in the church as well, and in the home, in the school, in the marketplace, wherever you go. But especially, especially in the home and the church. So, anyway guys, so, I'm gonna leave it right there. That's it for today. I'm gonna leave it right there. And uh, I'm gonna say that this was Mario Michel. Um, I hope to see you guys again. And if I don't see you guys again, I hope to see you guys again when Jesus Christ comes the second time. Until then, bye for now. Tomorrow out.